If you Google the most romantic cities in the world, Bruges will show up in most of those lists. For example, travel and leisure list Bruges at number eight, and many of the cities considered more romantic, like Paris, Rome, and Venice, that while beautiful, are overcrowded and extremely popular. Bruges, known for its picturesque, fairy tale like cobblestone streets and arched bridges, is perfect for a quiet and romantic weekend getaway. In this video, we'll share what to do in Bruges on a budget in one day. We started with a canal tour before the line got too long later in the day. A great place to start the tour from is Rosary Key, one of the most romantic views in the city. The canal tour is the perfect introduction to Bruges before exploring on foot. Prices start at 10 euros and it takes about 30 minutes. I definitely recommend going earlier in the day so the boat isn't as crowded since there's nothing romantic about being crammed in a boat with a bunch of other tourists. After a boat tour, it's time to explore the cobblestone streets and learn more about the history of Fairy Tale Bruges. Maybe it's a sign I'm getting older, but I've recently fallen in love with audio tours. I find them to be cost effective and you can still go at your own pace and not be with a huge crowd of other tourists. We used a tour through voice map, it was $10, and since there's two of us, it came out to $5 a person. You'll see large groups of people for the free walking tours offered, which are free, but you're still expected to tip, and from what I read, $10 a person is an average tip, so this ended up being cheaper and without the crowds. We share a set of Bluetooth headphones connected to one phone, so we're synced up for the audio and can walk and listen to the tour. Since it's through your phone, it uses GPS to tell where you are, and it starts the next audio as you follow the route. I'll share the main sites we visited and some of the interesting facts we learned, but if you want to do the tour yourself when you visit, I've included a link to the tour for you to check it out. We started off in the Market Square. This picture-perfect square with the brick buildings is a perfect spot for photos. One of the main sites in the Market Square is the Belfry from the 13th century. You can climb 366 stairs to the top for an impressive view for 15 euros. The Belfry was built with the spoils from a battle that the Flemish won against the French. Since we were on a budget, we just visited the courtyard, which is where cloth used to be sold and traded back around 1200 and 1400. Back then, more people lived in Bruges than cities like London and Paris. As you leave the Belfry courtyard, you can walk along the oldest street in Bruges. At the end of the street, you reach the Groothaus Palace. This palace was created in the 1400s by the family that owned the right to sell Groot, which was a spice used in making beer that made it more psychedelic than alcoholic. We explored the inner courtyard, but you could go inside and tour the museum, which now contains a mix of medieval and contemporary art for 15 euros. We passed the Church of Our Lady, but we'll be back for that later, and continued on to the old St. John's Hospital. The St. John's Hospital was built in the middle of 1100, and it's one of the oldest hospitals in all of Europe, and it functioned as a hospital until 1977. In medieval times, anyone could come to the hospital, even if they weren't sick, to get a meal and a place to sleep, and that's where the word hospitality comes from. Keeping with that, there is a free public bathroom here as well, which can be hard to find in Bruges. If you want to visit the museum, entrance is 15 euros. As you may have noticed, entrance to most of the museums and attractions in Bruges is 15 euros, which can add up quickly. After your walking tour, you can pick which museum interests you most, or if you're planning on staying longer, check out the Bruges Museum card. For only 33 euros, you can go inside many of the museums in Bruges for 72 hours. It's probably best for trips that are two to three days, but if you want to visit more than two museums, it'll save you money. We explored the exterior of the hospital and passed through a beautiful art gallery over a canal. As we continued wandering the narrow cobblestone streets, we reached the Beguinage. Created in 1245, it was a safe haven for single women and widows. They would live here like nuns, but without the commitment to God, so they could leave if they met a husband, for example. They had their own farms, bakery, brewery, and church, and also worked voluntarily at the hospital. It even had its own laws separate from the town of Bruges, and there are still nuns that live here today. As you leave the Beguinage, you'll see Mina Water Lake, also called the Lake of Love. 
And while the legend of the origin of the lake involves a tragic love story, it's said that if you walk across the bridge over the lake with your partner, you will have an eternal love. You'll see plenty of swans throughout Bruges, which adds to the romantic fairy tale vibe, and they've been there since the 15th century when they were a symbol of wealth and power. Our next stop was a quick lunch of frites in a small cafe before continuing on to explore more of the magical cobblestone streets like Stoff Street, the smallest alley in Bruges that was home to the red light district back in the Middle Ages. Keep an eye out for the small doors that show how much shorter people were back then. Godshausen or Alms houses were built back in the 14th century to house the elderly. There are 46 of these complexes throughout Bruges and many are still in use today. We visited the oldest Alms house in the city, Rooms Convent, that was built back in 1330. The small complex is tucked away off a busy street and has a peaceful garden and cute little houses. You can visit many of these alms houses across the city, but remember to be respectful of these peaceful hidden gems where people still live today. The Church of Our Lady is the second tallest building in the world that is made entirely out of bricks. The ground around the church is clay, so it was easy to create the bricks from the clay right next to the construction site of the church. Behind the church is a garden and one of the most picturesque bridges in all of Bruges. Known as the Bridge of Love, it's only 100 years old and it's the smallest bridge in Bruges, but it's popular with the tourists and for good reason, it's a beautiful romantic spot. It started raining on us as we wandered through the garden of the Gurnian Museum. All the hidden gardens and courtyards add to the romantic atmosphere of Bruges. At this point, we've made it back to the most photographed place in Bruges, Rosary Key. After taking some more pictures, we walked through the Tanner Square and past the fish market to Berg Square. In this square, you'll find the city hall from 1421, a court from the 1500s, a government building from 1726, and the Holy Blood Chapel, all with different architectural styles. The Holy Blood Chapel is the oldest building in the square and is said to hold a relic with the blood of Jesus Christ. It is one of the few free buildings that you can enter in Bruges. After finishing our walking tour, we headed back to the Market Square, stopping for waffles and hot chocolate at Chez Albert and some souvenir shopping. It was late November when we visited, so the streets were decorated for Christmas and the Christmas market was open, making it even more magical. Bruges was as magical and romantic as advertised and perfect for a day trip exploring this fairy tale like city. I hope this guide has given you some ideas of the free and affordable places you can visit in the city. Happy travels, and we'll see you next time.